Edge to core. In an era where 75% of the data will be created outside of the traditional data center, we will dive today into managing and utilizing this data to deliver real client value while addressing things like scalability on latency, but also your security. Manish Mishra is the Chief Business Officer at iNext Business at LTI Mindtree, and he's here to talk us through all the latest insights and the trends. Welcome, Manish. Thank you, Ron. Indeed, a pleasure being with you today. Yes, it's great to have you. And uh, you as an expert, you talk to many clients. So what kind of hurdles do you see at your customers that they are facing in making uh, the most out of their edge to core data? And, and how do you address these type of uh, issues? Thank you, Ron. So first aspect of uh, our business is we are providing solutions to our customers across uh, a quad factor of factors, which is mind, materials, machine, and location. If you put all these four together in context of any business, then you are creating a solution which is leading for the customers to provide them insights across from right from their production or from the shop floor uh, or their retail point or a medical device as the industry might be uh, to take actionable insights around that. And that's what we do as a part of our business. Uh, so at the core of our business, which is uh, iNext, at the core of our iNext business, Insights Next is the product which was created, curated, and uh, conceptualized within LMT Group. Uh, and it was used for uh, you know, monitoring 12,000 assets, movable and immovable assets in the construction, heavy industry, uh, heavy industry and petrochemicals business across. That is the product. Uh, it has been uh, uh, you know, robust and running for last five years. What we do today is use this product for you know, providing insights to our customers, right from the sensors, picking up the data from the sensors to creating and uh, synthesizing the data, putting the data together, putting the algorithms and delivering actionable insight. So one of the uh, inspirations that we draw our business uh, for our business is Dragonfly. If you see Dragonfly has a compound eye. And when I say compound eye, it is, its eye is made of about 30,000 lenses. And each one of these lenses produces a static image. What Dragonfly does is it synthesizes all these 30,000 images and gets itself a 360 degree view. And that provides its action intelligence to move or uh, you know, take its next step as you may. And that's what we do with Insight Next. Our whole view is to pick up the data across the different sensors or elements, synthesize it, process it, and then put it together in one place to provide actionable insights to our customers. Uh, for their engagements. Uh, you know, similarly, I'm sure from your end of the spectrum, Ron, you are actually seeing, uh, you know, a lot of uh, uh, demand uptake in the industry 4.0 or, uh, you know, the data from uh, shop floor to boardroom uh, kind of engagements. Where do you see the customers are investing and more importantly, they're realizing the value? I like to explain things. I, I like to tell stories because st stories are easy to remember. Now, let's take an example as well. Let's take a beverage plant um, where advanced robots, they handle, for example, the, the repetitive type of task. Um, and they do it most of the time with precision and making the process much safer, much more um, efficient. This is one aspect. And then you have the, the tiny sensors, which are part of the Internet of Things concept, which uh, monitor every aspect in every aspect in your production. They do it often real time. You were addressing that as well in the beginning. And they predict and they are mitigating all different kinds of issues. And they do that before they become any type of, of problem. So this is an area where companies invest in. And another area is, is the data generated by IoT devices, which are analyzed by AI, by artificial intelligence algorithms. And they're providing this crucial type of insights and optimizing operations. And they do this to, most of the time, help to reduce the cost, but also to increase the product quality. Now, what we see at factories as well is that they have a digital twin, a digital twin of the factory, which is, some kind of virtual replica. And this is used to testing all kinds of new strategies uh, without disrupting the actual production. So they can do it virtually, test it already, and then define when it's working, they bring it into production. It's an important area where companies invest in. Another one is um, the entire supply chain, which is, is digitized. And they're promoting transparency and efficiency. And that's from the whole process, from let's say the sourcing up to the delivery. But if we see all this different type of digitization processes, this comes also with potential risk, cybersecurity threats. Hence, robust uh, protective measures are an integral part of the setup, which you need to do when you start working on your IoT 4.0 approach. 
Then another aspect, as you were talking about, I think you were referring it to the mind, um, where you have employees. They are very essential to this automated environment. And they have been reskilled to work with these advanced technologies. So that's one part. And they focus on requiring more type of human innovation, uh, human decision making, and turning this traditional factory into a modern, efficient industry 4.0 type of powerhouse. And maybe you think, hey, this is, is the future. This is some kind of, of fantasy, but this is reality today, where not every company is doing all the aspects, but most of the companies are working on all these aspects step by step to driving their productivity, driving the, the profitability. Now, to, to summarize it, you're talking about this for industry 4.0 trends, um, which you, you were referring to. It's a lot of technologies. It's advanced robotics. It's Internet of Things. It's AI, artificial intelligence, digital trends, your supply chain digitization, cybersecurity, and it's workforce reskilling. So all these aspects are a pivotal trend and pivotal type of investments in shaping today's industry 4.0 journeys and combined the driving efficiency, productivity, and your profitability. So it's, it's a broad spectrum. And yeah, companies, most of the time, they need support by this. So Manish, if, if you look to your iNext approach, you're helping customers to adapt to this high tech automation. So how is it that you are expanding your services to meet this, this ever changing landscape? And can you explain how you're helping customers um, going through this journey? Absolutely, Ron. So you rightly said, right, it is, uh, you know, the operational technology has been there for years, like I always say. But it is now with a combination of artificial intelligence, uh, visual reality or uh, virtual reality, uh, uh, you know, the whole PLM solutions, the data, the big data, and more importantly, edge computing. Uh, it's the paradigms of this that have made it easier for you to be able to take the data from, uh, you know, an end element and use that data and provide it to, uh, you know, the end customers. And Today, what we are doing, I mean, if you look at, if I look at my strategy at this point of time for the iNext business, we say we help customers reimagine, we help customers reinvent, and we help customers rethink their, you know, their businesses at this point of time. So if you look at reimagining, uh, you know, a case in point would be what we do for uh, Government of India, which is a Jal Jeevan program that we have done, uh, translating to Water for Life, right? And that's where we are providing and using our inside platform to sensorize all the water pipeline, uh, you know, water delivery elements from overhead tanks to pumps to water pipelines to the dispensation units, uh, sensorizing all of them, thereby giving one single visibility to uh, Government of India on what's the water quality, what's the water consumption, what's the, uh, you know, water utilization patterns that they have. And uh, you know what, how the demographics is consuming the water because we have overlaid that with the geospatial data that we have. So that's one example. But at the other end of the extreme uh, example would be a, a toothbrush company that we work with. They have a small they use electric tooth make electric toothbrushes. How can you put sensors? And they have a put a sensor at this point of time in the toothbrush, uh, the electric toothbrush, which provides them the data which is a specific to me as a, uh, you know, as a user on my dental hygiene. So they can actually do a targeted selling to me or provide me targeted insights about my dental hygiene. So it's engagements like that, that is working. How are we doing this now? We have, now that we have established a product and a capability, we are now picking up this capability and translating that into what we called as industry solutions. So we have, uh, you know, a solution called Energy Next. We have a solution for uh, sustainability, which we call ESG Next. We have pointed solution like worker safety. We have a pointed solution like asset next that we are tracking. We have healthcare next as a solution that we are putting it together. So if you may imagine, have a core engine that we have in place. And now we are creating industry versions or industry use cases for that particular core engine and delivering solutions to the customer. It's an exciting journey indeed. Uh, a lot of learning for all of us and uh, really having a great time. Yeah, and I like your dental example. And it even extends the whole edge, edge to core and also make data governance an important part of, of the whole process. Monish, thank you a lot for having this, this conversation, sharing your insights with these great cases, the latest Industry 4.0 developments. And for the audience, thank you for watching, and we're looking forward to seeing you next time.